Talk to us about what inspired you to want to take in what is a rapidly growing market and a large one in terms of total addressable market. Yeah, so the origins of Parfait really started with an experience, um, a problem experienced by many women, which is managing and caring for our textured hair. The journey for me started at 10 years old when I had a very terrible experience with a chemical relaxer mm -hmm. that made all of my natural hair fall out. And so I really started using hair wigs and extensions to give my hair a break and then a chance to regrow and have essentially spent the last 20 years navigating the friction field market of hair wigs and extensions. So really from our collective experience solving technical challenges during our times at some of the largest tech companies in the world, we were really inspired to leverage AI and computer vision to improve the lives of people in our communities and mm. with black hair at the top of our list of problems that needed real investment for a better solution parfait was really born with a mission to develop products and services with technology that recognize and prioritize all people starting with people of color and Fuoco, talk to us about how you're going to be using facial recognition skin coloring to be able to match people to the correct wig for example and when you're looking at servicing your direct to consumer what what was missing in the data, in the open source data already? Yeah, you know, our world continues to be more informed and shaped by artificial intelligence. And as we think about the future, we really have to start prioritizing and finding solutions to make it much more equitable. And so the training data used in facial recognition technology currently are largely imbalanced, and it often relies on data that is very similar in makeup. And thus, the visual makeup of those faces do not represent the composition of faces worldwide. And so this often results in very poor performance for people of color who don't fit into that data set. And so the impact of this can be seen in the innovations of consumer facing AI that cause negative external experiences for people of color. You know, one study by the Georgia Institute of Technology saw findings in autonomous driving systems that have more difficulty in detecting pedestrians with darker skin. Um, you know, another study showed that, you know, non white test takers taking exam proctoring software reported issues when attempting to verify their identity. And so at Parfait, we're really trying to tackle this problem to make major progress in improving the product and service outcomes for marginalized communities, starting by building facial recognition technology for women. So, so five million already raised. I mean, of course, you've got a product that you want to unfold. You've got a list of what ten thousand at least people that signed up to be starting to buy their wigs via you. And but you're looking at, of course, improving manufacturing when it comes to wigs, but also, as you say, building up the data set, making AI more fit for purpose, less bias. And start to tell us how you go about doing that from the ground up. Yeah, you know, yeah, the so from the manufacturing. Apologies, I, I said ESO too early. ESO, this one was aimed at you. Yeah, so um, right now, manufacturing this industry hasn't seen innovation in quite some time. You're, the raw hair and lace products that are used to construct these wigs really require significant time and manual intervention, which is a large reason for the exorbitant price tag. Mm. And so really our goal is to fundamentally change the way that these products are produced from the source, making it faster and cheaper to produce customized wigs at scale. Okay, and I'm interested in therefore also, if we go, when you're looking at the manufacturing revolutionizing that, getting people a more valuable product, but a more uh, consumer sensitive price point in particular on perhaps something that usually would cost thousands coming down to the hundreds. If we go, I'm interested in what also you need to do in terms of bringing le less bias within the data that you're using. How are you going out and ensuring that you're making it better and a more efficient AI? Yeah, you know, we can't ever say that artificial intelligence is going to be perfect. And while we take those precautions, you know, going out and collecting raw data ourselves, making sure that our data sets are balanced when it comes to annotations and gender and all of those types of things, we also have a very human focused pipeline in which our stylists and our, you know, live team members are going in and correcting and annotating any data that doesn't fit the customer's needs. And Iso, briefly, I mean, of course, your product is for people of all colors and therefore in very much you can see that from your marketing and the way in which you're focused. But talk to us about just how big a market this is. Remind the people who have been putting money in there that this is sizable. This is scaling. Yeah, this is a $13 billion market. It's expected to grow by 13% to $13.2 billion by 2026. And so women have been largely underserved mm -hmm. in the core pieces of wig wearing that require you to be able to wear these products to look natural and confident. And that's true customization. And so what we're really doing is creating a way for these women to be able to customize their wigs and extensions without all of that manual friction and quite frankly, 
what we have found is because of the way the manufacturing process is today, it's going to be required for us to be able to scale this to mm. the $13 billion market that needs it. Um, we would require AI and technical intervention. And that's what we're working on today with this round of funding.